<laughs> Are you? We're waiting on you. Come on, we have lobsters to catch. Where's my hat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are late. How is it going, boys and girls? Oh, we grab my water right there, please? Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Keep Us Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. You know Malin. There's Will. Hey. He already caught his lobsters this morning. I had some charters this morning and we are done. It is 1 p.m. It is opener of mini season. Um, honestly, it hasn't been an ideal day. A lot of thunderstorms, a lot of wind, but we have to participate. We're gonna run the little boat out and grab our lobsters, hopefully. Water got really dirty from the storms that have been rolling through, but um, long story short, it's mini season. We're gonna go grab our lobsters. We'll see you down there. Slightly breezy. Like I said, we had some pretty bad storms come through starting last night and it's been blowing and windy and storming all day. So there's a good chance the water got really dirty, but good thing is you don't need a crazy, crazy amount of viz to catch lobsters. It may just be hard for the camera to pick it up, but let's get out there, check it out. We are in the general vicinity that we scouted. Uh, if you watch that video, you could see how clear it was the other day. And this is what we're looking at right now. A little bit of rain and wind just completely flopped it around. So kind of is what it is. We'll hop in on a couple spots and check and see if we can see anything. And uh, hopefully we can find a few to eat. Don't necessarily need a limit, but just need enough for dinner, maybe six. See what we come up with. Welcome back underwater, everybody. Appreciate you tuning in. I can't remember if I said it in the video, but for those of you who are not familiar, mini season is a short two day season where they open up lobster to recreational people before the commercial season opens. And down here in Monroe County in the Florida Keys, it is six per person. Uh, in other parts of Florida, you can have, I believe it's 12 per person, if I remember correctly. So this is the first spot. I'm looking for one particular ledge, and this is it. I find it. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be completely stuffed with lobster, and unfortunately, it is completely vacant. There was nothing there other than some fish. There were some dog snappers and goliath groupers. There was one black grouper in there, actually. But um, a lot of times, these big ledges uh, will be stacked, completely stacked with lobster to the top. And uh, unfortunately, it was empty this day. And, and normally what that means is the lobsters will stay together in groups. And uh, it just seems like they didn't walk to this area. Well, four Goliath groupers, a bunch of dog snappers, a black grouper, and no lobster. It's unbelievable. So we moved along a little bit, um, just to a different area, less current, a little shallower, more ledgy bottom. Uh, I know a couple of you are probably wondering why I didn't hit those coral heads from my scouting video, and we went by there. The water was extremely dirty, but there actually were boats on it in the morning, so I didn't even bother stopping there. Uh, during mini season, there's so many people, so many boats, uh, there really is, there really aren't any uh, secret spots. There's some shorts right here that look unharassed, so hopefully, hopefully there's some keepers here. That's my girl, even though I missed it on camera. The keeper, right? Good one? Give me, hold on, just give me one second. Well, if you feel like swimming. No. Give me one second if there's another keeper. We'll swim back. So 
Madeline snagged her a nice one before I could get the camera on. Um, we found this one nice crack. It was kind of, I don't want to say odd shaped. It was just really nicely shaped for a lobster. They like this. Hard to get into. Got real narrow and tight. And um, there was quite a few of them packed in there. That's our hole. There's a bunch in there. Um, just stay right here just so they don't move on it. I'm going to go get the boat. I know, you got first. I'll give it to you. Just stay right here. Don't go underwater or anything. So like I said, what I decided to do, I moved the boat over. I, I anchored it right on top of this rock. Um, mini season really stresses me out. There's so many boaters and unfortunately a lot of boaters that don't know what they're doing, don't pay attention and just are irresponsibly running boats. Um, so we try to stay as close to the boat as we can. So we got the boat right on top of the spot and it's time to get to work and uh, I didn't realize it until after this lobster um, the best way to go to go or to walk these was to the right I started trying to go to the left I figured that lobster would be able to squeeze out of this side but uh, you can see it wasn't there wasn't enough space there for that lobster to come out uh, and Madeline had already had the system figured out but I didn't realize that that's what she was doing that is a tricky little rock. There's a bunch of them in there. So you can kind of get an idea of the technique here. I was working my lobster towards the top of the screen. And Madeline had already figured out from the first one that she caught. That you work them towards the bottom of the screen and that ledge opens up. And they're a little easier to get out of that section. And you just want to separate them one by one. Um, these actually ended up being short, so we try and get them out and away from the area. Too small, yeah. Put them out that way. That'll make it e it'll make it easier to get the big ones for sure. So I just assumed that we got lucky and found a spot that no one had been at, but. After looking around, you can see there's a broken lobster leg right there. Um, and what that means is, and me, to me, that's that people have probably already been here and were harassing these lobsters. And they either couldn't get the rest, um, or they maybe just had their limit and they left the rest in there. And Madeline is really good at lobstering. It's one of her many talents. Just takes patience, a little bit of finesse, and just walk them out. This one was a little excitable. Um, the fact that the lobsters were stuffed so far back in there and um, they were really jittery had made me think that, or another reason that I thought someone had already been here. But she had that one come out and it kind of shot back in this little dead end hole. And I got my, my hands on it and I'm not grabbing the antennas or any of the legs. Grab the knuckles and the head. Uh, the rest of that stuff will break off if you grab it and pull on it. That Juicy good. one. Yay. That was all you. I was there for the layup. Or the rebound. Now we have got our system down. We're just working together, taking turns one by one. It's a little weird, weird angle here. I'm upside down, looking under the ledge, trying to see everything and trying to make sure the camera's in frame. We pick one, and just start walking it out to the right. This ledge was awkwardly shaped. It was like my snare was almost too long to get it in there comfortably in some of the spots. But that, like I said, that right side of the ledge opened up, so we just started started walking them all out that side one by one and plucking them off. You got the technique down. They gotta come this way. They can't go the other way. The other side just gets deeper. And this is how you measure a lobster. You go between the eyes and on top of the head. If it sits on top of the head, it is legal. 
if it were to sit down like that behind the head, it means it's short. But you set that gauge right between the eyes and run it across the head, or what they call the carapace. And that is a good one. And if you've never been lobstering, it is extremely enjoyable for me. Maybe it's just the type of person that I am. It's very, especially a spot like this. Sometimes it's like little potholes or easy holes to get them out of. I enjoy this because it's tactical and it's a challenge. It's like an Easter egg hunt. It's just something about it. And not only are you harvesting food, but you are putting your skills to the test, uh, which I enjoy. That's always a good time. I've been lobstering since I was just a kid. I don't even know how young, honestly. I've got photos of me probably five or six years old holding lobsters. It's very nostalgic for me as well. Same, same technique, walk them out to the right, get them out in the open and get them with a snare. There's so many in there. There's so many in there. Someone's already been here. There's legs on the ground, but um, these are just tricky ones. But yeah, there's still a lot in there. We, I mean, realistically, we need two more. We got four, I think. so good at lobster room. That's a good one. Did the light help? I didn't need the light. Oh you didn't even need it? Oh you got a you got a hole in that. Did you leave the light down there? Yeah. Okay. Light's still on down there. Okay. Should I go get another one? Um, sure. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, you can see I'm using a snare, Madeline's using a tickle stick and a net. Uh, just different people prefer different methods. I like using both, honestly. I like the, the snare because it's just one thing in my hand. I'm not having to carry two. And I just use it as a tickle stick and then turn it into a snare once the lobster comes out. You got the system. <laughs> That's a beefy one. There's another one back there like that one. Here, baby. Huh? My turn?
One more would be eight, right? Yeah. That's eight? Oh, okay. Let me see a light. I just want to go see how many more are in there. It's pretty cool. They're just, it's a good hole. So we had eight lobster in the boat. I mean, honestly, we don't need any more than that. We, um, we could have kept grabbing them, but the older I get, the less I want to fill the box and just have enough to eat. Figured we'd leave them for somebody else. another six or seven in there yeah. that's wild that's a cool spot I, I haven't dove that one in years actually alrighty not too shabby some rookies so first spot way too much current way dirtier we headed out just a little bit and this is an old number I haven't dove in years and years and uh, it was very apparent someone had been here this morning or earlier at some point today and uh just couldn't get them all out, or maybe they had their limit already, but uh, we grabbed eight and left probably another seven or eight in there, but we don't need, realistically, we don't need more than eight. Um, we got day two of mini season tomorrow anyways, so we are done here. The lobster assassin. <laughs> I think we both got four and four. Really? Maybe five and three. I wasn't counting. I was. <laughs> Who's counting? But um, we're gonna get we'll head back, get out of this wind and the chilly air, and. Have lobster for dinner. We'll see you there. So I'm gonna break down our lobsters. Pretty much, well, I hate to say there's one way, but it's pretty straightforward. If we eat them whole, like if sometimes we'll just split them straight down the middle of the serrated knife and put the whole thing on the grill and you pick through it that way. Uh, but what we are doing tonight, I need the tail separated from the heads. We still use the heads. There's a lot of meat in there and uh, you can use it to make a stock as well. But um, today we are going to be separating the heads from the tails. And you can cut them, you can twist them. Everyone does it a little differently. Um, I feel like on spiny lobsters, you can get a little more if you cut them, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. But if you use the, if you're still using the heads, it's um, not as big of a deal. Just like that. I'm just use an antenna. And I'll have a, a vein there in the middle. You want to clean that out. right now. I throw that into a salt brine. And we didn't keep our limit. We um, live in here. We just like to eat them fresh. I don't, I mean, if we went out and got our limit both days, we'd have 24 lobsters and that's quite a bit, quite a bit more than we need. We ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just eight. That'll be enough to make what we're making for dinner and we'll have a couple left over for the rest of the week. Just like that. There's our lobster dinner. It is time for some fresh lobster dinner. Uh, we haven't done this recipe in quite some time and due to popular demand in the household, <laughs> I got voted out. We're having key lime garlic lobster or just lime garlic lobster. Uh, we did this probably almost two years ago, but yeah. there's a lot of new people to the channel, so I did want to share it. 
I'll bring you up to speed. So far I have cut the tops off, two heads of garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, roasted them in the oven, 45 minutes, 350 to 400, doesn't matter. Um, just throw them in the oven for more than 30 minutes, over 350. Um, we have six lobster tails. I boiled them for six minutes in water and I added some salt. Um, I wanna underdo them just a little bit because we're gonna finish them in the oven once we uh, put these together. So right now we're gonna make our, the key lime garlic of the key lime garlic lobster. So I have two sticks of butter melted. Um, I've got my garlic that was roasted. I'm just gonna squeeze those right into there. And if you like more or less garlicky or more or less buttery, limey, cook to taste. And so I used to muddle this or mix it by hand, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use the neutral bowl today. Again, right now, just butter and garlic in there. And this shouldn't take long. So lime, this really depends on your limes, how they taste, how much you want. Start slow and add and taste as, as you go. You want there to be, personally, I'm not gonna say you want there to be, I want there to be a hint of lime, but not overpowering, not too much, because lime is obviously a strong flavor. Normally it's about one and a half to two limes. I'm hungry. I know, I can see that. I almost lost my finger. <laughs> All right, so set your sauce aside. Um, in this bowl, I have fresh grated Parmesan cheese, uh, panko, and a, I had actually added a little bit of seasoned breadcrumb this time. Normally I just do panko and uh, Parmesan, and it's about half and half panko to uh, Parmesan, and then a dash of breadcrumb I did this time. Like I said, normally just panko Parmesan. And now we're going to prep our lobsters. Oh, and after I boil these um, for six minutes, straight into an ice bath, stops the cooking. They will continue to cook if you pull them out and let them sit. So I'm just gonna take some kitchen shears and I'm gonna take out what would be the underside or the belly of the lobster, just right down the side. And I need, I'm gonna need these shells. So I wanna keep the shells intact. And then I'll just peel right off and the meat should just pull right out it should be hopefully just a smidge underdone and it does feel like it feels a little soft still that's just what I want and I want to save those shells so I'm gonna finish these up and we'll get these put together oh and I wanted to show you if you can see well maybe you can see the camera will pick it up just a little translucent still in the center. That's perfect, it's not completely done. So when I put these in the oven to bake, it'll finish. It won't get too tough or dried out. All right, so I've got my lobster. I had to move it to a bigger bowl. Um, didn't have enough room to mix. You may have to heat that butter up if you do it ahead of time. Mine got a little, a little tight. Never said this was a healthy dish. <laughs> we got our garlic butter and lime. Healthy for the salt. I normally do about <laughs> half in there. Got our oven coming up, and I recommend doing this with aluminum foil or something that'll cover your sheet because it is gonna get messy. 
I'm gonna try to pack them close together. I'm just going right in. We're gonna pack these shells back. Whew. Smells so good. All right, so there's always extra. <laughs> It expands. It ex for real, it expands. <laughs> Showed it a little. I'll be my breakfast. Yeah, I was going to say that one was mine. <laughs> <laughs> you have a little lobster pot pie there. <gasps> Yum. Mm. All right. Hey, hey, hey. I'm so hungry. All right, now I've got our panko uh, parmesan, and there's a little bit of seasoned breadcrumb in there. And you guessed it. Right on top. Oh, you're kind of wasting. It's, it's not a. I never said it was a, an organized event. <laughs> Don't waste it. No. So you can leave it at that if you'd like. If you want to get real wild. <laughs> really clog those arteries. <laughs> really. <yeah. laughs> you take, take what's left and give you some drizzles over top and let it soak into those. Not too much, because you don't want it to be soggy. No, no, that's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> that's alright. It's like baked clams. Mm. <laughs> alright, we're good. Alright, there we are. Oven's at 350. I normally let them go at least 5 minutes, probably closer to 10 minutes. Maybe a little longer, just kind of keep an eye on them. And then towards the end, I like to throw it on broil. Mm. Let them crisp up a bit. Mm. You. No, no, stand back. Stand back. You ready? <laughs> yes. Hold on, hold on. I gotta pull the little one out first. That's not the big reveal. Wow. I cannot believe you just said that about that pot, pot pie. pie. <laughs> you ready? Oh, Will, you need to hurry up and look at this. Oh, look at the crunchies. Wow. Yum. Alright, so. We're gonna let this cool down, I promise. <laughs> Not gonna burn my mouth. We'll see you in a few. Anyone want any salt or pepper with their broccoli? Yes. Oh crap, I left the lid of this in the car. You left the lid of the salt in your car? <laughs> I brought it with me. I have so many questions. <laughs> I brought it with me when I was eating the edamame. <laughs> I mean, just need a salt shaker in the car. Yeah. I do need that actually. All right. <laughs> I'll let you take your pick. Wait, I need a fork. No, you don't. <laughs> you want to shoot these like oysters? No, I mean. <laughs> Try me. Try me. I'm gonna get this bad boy. Just gentle, slowly. You got some big ones, huh? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, they're, they're good, good average size. All right, babe. I can't wait any longer. So go ahead, rip in, <laughs> rip in there. I'm always like hesitant because I don't know. I don't want to add too much and not enough, and you never know. Because that's tuna seed. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, where is it? Where am I supposed to go? Are they smoking hot still? Mm -mm. Wow. Kind of, well, are they warm? It looks incredible. Ooh. Oh, you can taste the garlic butter. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's on there. No, no, I was, I was just <laughs> locating if there was just more for That's your all. cereal tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. You still got it, babe. Wow, that crunch is so that good. That one's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. It's hard to beat. We started doing this with oysters and it eventually bled into the lobsters. It is fantastic. You <laughs> but we're so hungry, we're like not even speaking. <laughs> yeah. That is all we have. Mm. We got day two mini season tomorrow. I don't even know if I'll go out, honestly. Maybe. Are you going well? I'm gonna go. 
My spot was too packed. We'll attack <laughs> from land today, so maybe I'll, hopefully I'll get back out there in the afternoon. I got some stuff to do, but. I think we should go. As always. <laughs> any questions, leave them in the comments. Appreciate you tuning in. You got anything to share? You have lobster in your beard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, have, I, I have nothing to share. <laughs> <laughs> this is still Don't good. even look at me. Yeah. <clears throat> We will see you on the next one. You rocked it, babe. That's a crunch. Yeah. Mm. Well, on all it's the all flavor. Yeah. <laughs> I have a pool of butter in my shell that mm -hmm. I'm dipping in. Your lobster's swimming? <laughs> yeah, and butter. That's not so bad.